Hey, and welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another StarCraft II broadcast. My name is Anaris, and today we're here watching a King of the Hill show match series from StarCraftWorld.it between White Ross spawning up here as the Protoss in the top left position against Damaga, the Zerg down in the bottom left. So we actually have a little bit of a civil war going on here. Both of these players are from the Ukraine. Hmm, should make for a very interesting match series here. Now let's actually talk a little bit about the players, introduce them, and then we'll watch the builds as they uh, start to take shape. Let's start off down here with Damaga, actually. Uh, real name, make sure I pronounce this right, Dimitrio, D-M-Y-T-R-O, I think I got that right. 25-year-old player with MTW, his recent accomplishments are he took uh, first place in the Game Creds Cup, number 13, and he also took second place in the HD World Tournament, so pretty cool stuff there. Won a, uh, won a decent bit of prize money, if I recall correctly from that. And like I said earlier, he's from the current Ukraine. So is White Raw up here, formerly known as Duckload Raw, due to his sponsorship. I don't know if it terminated or what. I think it just expired. But uh, he was recently picked up by Thermal Takes Esports team. Uh, just goes by TT Esports. He is a 30-year-old player, uh, again, from Ukraine. Her real name is Alexei. Uh, one of the things I want to point out about him in particular is that he has outstanding micro, particularly in the early game. He is just a vicious opponent. I've seen him in several of the uh, several of the SK Gaming Champions Trophy tournaments firsthand, and my god, he is brutal. So, Looking for a great game here between both the players. Oh, do you want to point out that uh, White Rob, uh, one of the, actually, it was pretty interesting, one of the first big tournaments that I saw him in for StarCraft II was the HDH, and I don't want to give away any spoilers, but, excuse me, but there was definitely a lot of entertaining games from him in that series. So if you haven't already watched it, you should go over to Husky's channel and check that out. It's the one that uh, HD and Husky cast a long time ago during the beta. So, you can see White Raw opting for, for that Forge Fast Expand, dropping it right there. Not surprised. Okay, it's Taldarim Alter. First thing that comes to mind, macro, macro, macro. And very nice here by White Raw, already denying the expansion here. We did see Damaga opened up with the pool first, and a couple of Zerglings are going to be able to dispatch that nice catch there with the drone dropping that expansion. He is a little bit behind his opponent, but still, that's okay. It's still really early in the game. We'll see how that affects it later on. More recently, uh, back to White Rot here, he actually took second place in the DreamHack Stockholm Invitational. So pretty cool stuff. One thing I'm hoping that we're going to see from White Rot here is his uh, signature multi-pronged attacks. He'll be, you know, he'll do like a Warp Prism in your main and then hit the front and then drop something else at a third, like a DT or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's really entertaining. I love casting this guy game, this guy's games rather. And Damaga also is one of the more entertaining Zerg players as well. So we're here in a very macro-oriented map. I'm going to expect some good things here. As you can see, this poor probe running for its dear life. Those Zerglings without the speed can't quite catch up to it. Regenerating shields oh so slowly. One, two, then it gets hit. So we can expect to see that probably drop down eventually here. Damaga still going ahead and droning up here pretty hard, sitting on four right now. Both players are in the 20s. Actually, Zerg just graduated up to uh, 30 supply there. As you see, that White Ross continuing with the wall and income, you can just take a look at that right now. Nothing too, uh, nothing too sinister coming from either player at this point in the game. We just patched the five minute mark. Oh, that probe finally died. Oh, man. So, things that I would like to see here, I'm hoping that we're going to see a little bit of aerial harassment. I think that it could play out pretty well. White Raw, in particular, considering the spawning positions, with the fact that the Zerg player is already taking this expansion down here, I would expect him. Oh, is is he actually going to spot that? No, wait, that's over here. Never mind. I was thinking it was actually uh, in a different place than it was, but nice catch by Damaga. Um, anyways, what I was thinking was the probe was actually right here, but uh, I think that White Raw is going to want to rely on mobility for a little bit in the early game. He's going to have to get some scouting done to catch this expansion. Phoenix, great thing for that. He could do hallucination, but personally, I'm a fan of getting out a couple Phoenix earlier on. And uh, that's something I've kind of been developing recently, just working on that. And doing some harassment, because it really does help shape the game as you go along. You're forcing the Zerg, depending on how many Phoenix you get, or maybe a Void or two, you're really kind of shaping and forcing them to get some air units, or anti-air, some Hydra, some extra Spore Crawlers, and then you can focusing on get, focus on getting some units to counter that, and kind of helps, uh, you know, shape their build more to your liking. 
So, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see what Damaga does actually here. I would expect from him, I'm hoping that we see some good Infester play coming out of him. Uh, we do have that Macro Hatch dropping down here, pretty appropriate, considering the fact that he has done essentially a double expand here right off the bat. Of course, this is the version of Taldarim Altar, where the third base down here has a reduced mineral count, only five, and one Vespine Geyser, as compared to the other version, which you see floating around, where it's got a set of destructible rocks here, but it's got a full complex of uh, minerals and gas. So as far as minerals and gas goes, you can once again look at that. We do see the Zerg player continuing to drone up here pretty hard. They've got a couple, one Spore Crawler coming. Now we can actually see he hasn't spotted anything over here just yet. But Spore Crawler, generally a pretty good thing to have. We do have one Void Ray actually just now coming out of here. It looks like it's going to be heading over here. Zerg will indeed have plenty of warning. So we're going to expect to see him maybe get another Queen or two. Yep, that's exactly what we were uh, kind of looking for. A little bit more in the way of a uh, Tier 1 Anti-Air Spore Crawlers. Obviously very good at that. Although this one's parked way down here. Mm, all right, there's the second one dropping over there. Demaga, actually, you know, I'm not really sure that I agree with this positioning as the Void Ray is coming right here, and the Zerg player knew that it was coming. He saw it coming directly down here. So, with the six-second burrow time, yep, yeah, there we go. Now he's going to shift that over, and hopefully he's going to be able to save this thing. Oh, it is so close. Oh, he does cancel it at the last second. Good save by Demaga. Now, with that double expansion coming into play, you can actually see Zerg is about a couple hundred minerals up on his opponent right now, so that's pretty good. Uh, as far as the production, you can see we do have a Hydralisk in that was just started, mainly in response, again, to the air play that we have going on right now. Not really committing a whole lot to it, but you see that White Rot has a couple Phoenix around here. This will be good enough for going around and hunting for Overlords and sort of things like that, lifting up any sort of drones they can catch, lifting up a Queen, etc. You can see down here, Hydralis Den is going down. Speaking of drones, look at it looks like White Raw is actually going to catch this room. Yes, he does see it. He lifts it up, takes it out, delays an expansion for Damaga. That could potentially be quite large here, as White Raw's own expansion is going up here. This will allow him to catch up a good bit. Of course, the Zerg always wants to be one base up on his opponent, and we see that right now he kind of is, but that's going to close. This is going to close the gap very quickly. And I do like how White Raw is continuing to get out a Phoenix or two. Oh, so very close. Look at that. Demaga almost letting his Queen die, as it did run way out of range of the Spore Crawler there, the Static Defense guarding that expansion. Now, as far as the units at this point in the game, they're kind of scattered around, but you can effectively see Zerg really doesn't have any means of harassing at this point. Several Hydras did just pop out a second or two ago, and we do see that Damaga is controlling that Watchtower, which White Raw will probably see if he does have health bars turned on and is, seeing, is paying attention to the status of that tower. But White Raw still collecting a few Phoenix down here. We'll see exactly what he plans to do with it. It'll be kind of an interesting. Now, speaking of interesting, White Raw actually great positioning on this observer catching these hydras and the the queens ironically enough you see the creep isn't anywhere spread near uh down here but oh nice play by white rod trying to pick off oh nice heal at the last second trying to pick off the hydras there to maybe kind of mitigate some of the damage coming along here we see that he does have a colossus on the way extended thermal lance was just started a second or two ago now has the zerg player spotted this expansion yes he has so he's looking to try to put himself on uh, on that superior economic footing that he was just on a little while ago plenty of zerglings are on the way it's going to be really important to see how well White Raw ma uh, manages this Colossus, as this is going to be the heavy hitter here, mainly because of the, uh, the placement of all the structures it will make for some nice choke points, but it will kind of limit the Stalker's ability to fire. And you see the Hydra is actually being spread out by two very nice force fields by White Rock. Man, he is just handling this so very well. Again, another two perfect force fields, keeping the Zerglings just running around, allowing the Colossus to just do whatever he darn well pleased. But the Zerg player eventually actually took out the Colossus, and I think that's one of the reasons those queens were coming along, uh, healing the Hydralisks, and the fact that they can actually outrange a Colossus with their air shot. They have our seven range on that compared to the Colossus six until that extended thermal lance upgrade is done. So that attack is actually going to get finished up here as you see a uh, fully charged Void Ray still running around. Wow, I'm really surprised that thing lived. But uh, as far as the results of that attack, you can see 4425 to 5850, and you can actually see the workers and units killed right there. So nothing too much coming in the way of workers killed, but still, 
very interesting play nonetheless, as Damaga tried to knock him down, and it wasn't quite as successful. Again, White Raw just used that superior positioning, and the next engagement is really going to be in the favor of White Raw, I think, because you see Damaga is sending effectively the same units, they do have one weapons upgrade, and keep in mind, he does have the range upgrade, so that's good as well. But still, with that extended Thermal Lance and the fact that we do see him currently boosting out one Colossus, a second on the way, he's already got one here in the field, I think that we're going to see go very heavily in favor of White Rod, especially if he can land those Force Fields again. But in the meantime, something I'm very glad to be seeing right now, Damaga dropping down an Infestation Pit. I think I'd love to see some Fungal Growth here on this ball. As you can see, it's still pretty much entirely armored units, a couple sentries in there floating around, but the Void, Ray void Rays, the Colossus, I'm sorry, Colossi now. And uh, the Stalkers make for some pretty nice targets. Oh, very nice. The uh, Colossus getting a few couple free shots in there, as that is definitely not something Demaga wants to happen. And the Zerglings actually got bottlenecked for just a second, took one free shot from the Colossi, and now getting in here, trying to finish up. Nope, not going to happen. White Rock came out way ahead on that attack. You can actually just look at the supply and see 93 to 126. He has about a 30 food advantage right now. Something that he wants to actually try to uh, try to use to his advantage here. Actually taking out several overlords. Not really going to hurt the supply a whole lot for his opponent. But still, you see actually ooh, those hydras almost walk to their death right there. One thing I do like about Demaga here, he is going to go ahead and continue on with the upgrades for the hydras. One and one right now. As the Protoss player up here, you can see, has one attack. No armor, no shields at this point, but... That's perfectly all right. Twilight Council coming down the line, maybe. With the fact that we're seeing so many light units, High Templar would not be something that I would be surprised at at all. He could also get some Dark Templar, throw them around to the different expansions. Here we go. The Hydra's getting nice and close in. Oh, looks like the Void Ray going down. The, the Colossus almost going down as well here. And you see that White Raw actually isn't worrying about moving them out of position and loses two of them. He really could have used these if he wanted to harass this natural expansion. He still has one in a Void Ray. A bunch of Stalkers up here, but it's pretty much going to be up to this Colossus to keep these ranged units at bay. And oh man, Damaga moving up the Spore Crawler here. This is not really something that I think is going to work out too well for him, because he moved it well within the range of the Stalkers there. And now, with two Colossi here on the field once again, he is going to be forced to retreat these drones. That's actually going to hurt his economy a good bit there. We're going to see it kind of dip down. I do want to point out he does have this expansion, so all the while, still sitting pretty good at this point. But you see it is actually dipping down as a result of those 20 or so drones being taken out of the equation. Oh no, he's not moving the Colossi at all! Probably just not paying attention there for a split second. That is what happens. Two Colossi go down, and you do have one Colossus left. This one is... Cliff Walker, Protoss Ranger here as he just finally runs back at the last second. Very nice. Is, yo, man, I don't know. Is Damaga actually going to lose this hatchery? It's hard to say. He does have a bunch of Zerglings and Hydras on the way. Damaga hoping to uh, catch White Raw off guard again. Takes out the Colossus. Quite successful. And at least delays the uh, destruction of this expansion. Now, as far as units go, you can take a look once again. Sell 11 Hydralis, plenty of Zerglings. I still would love to see some Infestors. I'm really not sure why we haven't seen any yet. Haven't even seen Pathogen Glands upgrading, I don't think. But there we go. Damaga taking out the Colossus. That is a pretty crucial moment right there. The, fortunately for White Rod, though, he is in the high ground, or the ramp right here, so he's not able to allow the Zerglings to get a complete surround. Plus, the Forest Fields helped out in that regard as well. He's still about 20 or 30 supply ahead, though, so that's good. We can look at the income and see that he's about 12 probes or so, 11. And, uh, yeah, I think he's just in a great spot as Damaga effectively loses, you know, this gas, which is pretty big, especially considering the fact that he is finally does have some infestors on the way. And actually, I did not see... Does he have the pathogen glands? Okay, yes, he does have that. So that's going to work out well for him. Like I said, I just I, this is just begging for some fungal growth all of these armored units running around given the stalkers they don't have blink we don't see uh, he has a twilight council but oh man plenty more stalkers coming in on the way as white rock goes ahead with this expansion right here will he actually spot this one though oh it is so very close oh man the void raid no just a millimeter away from it Demaga's composition, once again, itself is actually pretty good against what White, White Raw has, but he's missing that key ingredient, he's missing that fungal growth to limit the mobility, to prohibit blinking, as we see the blink upgrade is complete now, so that's something that he's definitely going to want to use to his advantage, going to spread out the stalkers a little bit here in the next engagement. A couple Void Rays, very good call, uh, I think, here, as he is going ahead with another expansion. 
good stuff. And yeah, he's, uh, we see that Demaga is not mining gas from there. Speaking of mining gas, we can actually take a look at the income once again and see that Protoss is sitting ever so slightly ahead. I think it's just basically because he's working on that one additional gas right here, which we can see that his Zerg opponent is not. But that's okay. Uh, both players doing pretty good keeping the resources down. As White Raw may be looking to harass that expansion again, he is still going to hang it around. And that's the thing. This expansion, compared to all the other Zerg bases, is just sticking out. This is the sore thumb of the Zerg player right now. Very vulnerable to this type of Colossus play with the Blink Stalkers here down at the low ground. So you're going to see a lot of drones taken out right here. That is actually not a good thing for Damaga at all. We can just look at that and see. All right, 9 to 5. Still not, not that bad, but not something you want to have happen either uh, in general. But Protoss Weapons Level 1 Air. Ooh, that's sexy. All right, so there's some Infestors on the ground. Oh, nice blink by White Rod. Take it out. One, two, three. Oh, my God. There is just no... Okay, one Fungal Growth landed on there, but that could have been completely... Wow. All I can say is, wow. White Rod just mopping up over here, catching three out of the in four Infestors on the field, denying that Fungal Growth and ending it with a very one-sided fight there. There's the GG from Damaga. Nice catch by White Raw, man. Those stalkers are just beastly. Good play, man. Good game. All right, so let's go into game number two. See if Demaga is able to come back, get a victory, or maybe White Raw. Sealing the deal with more Infestor sniping. Yeah!